<laughs> Hello. 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 Hey, hey everyone. <clears throat> Welcome to the <laughs> Demon Plague. I am James Intercasso, your dungeon master and dungeon master for these five fine people we have gathered here today. I go by he, him, and we have an exciting show for you today. But first, let's go around the table and meet the folks who are playing their characters. And Amber, let's start with you. Don't reveal who you're playing yet, but let the people know who you are as our special guest. Hi. Yes, I'm Amber. Uh, I also go by Rocket Orca on Twitter, and I am part of the Geek Spective Network. Woohoo! Well, Woo -hoo. it is exciting to have you here playing a mystery guest character who we'll be getting to in a moment. Uh, but before we do that, let's meet the rest of the cast. TK, who are you and who are you playing? It's me, it's TK, and I muted myself in Zoom, but I definitely burped into my mic, so I'm sorry, Rudy. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> For our podcast listeners, you probably didn't hear any of that. <laughs> uh, I'm playing Isabel Halfback, who is a battle master fighter. We're very excited to um, kill all of the innocent people in this town. What alignment am I? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what? No, we just had a, an election, and I'm president forever. <laughs> <laughs> president. <laughs> uh, so that is excellent. We did just have an election. We don't know the results of it yet. The uh, People's Democratic but... Republic of Tomar's Crossing. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, how about you, Robert? Who are you, and who are you playing? Hey, I am Robert Adichie. Uh My pronouns are he, him. I'm playing Torsten Ailhan. Uh, if you, oh, there you go, just popped up. Human wizard cleric, I see on the yes. on the stream now. Hey. <laughs> and hopefully, I'll be the new a, a new council member in in Tomar's Cross. Yes, we are just about to find out. Uh, Lauren, how about you? Who are you, and who are you playing? Hi, I'm Lauren Urban. I go by Overcrazy Online. I am playing Rock the Aracoca Rogue, who wants Torsten to win and otherwise really doesn't care about any of this council stuff but she does have a a, a passive perception of 27 so she'll see everything and i go excellent. by she her excellent well it is awesome to have you here and how about you rudy who are you and who are you playing hi i'm rudy basso he him i'm playing rain bowie the human monk who's ready to punch any dissenters in this new government of ours <laughs> also, my alignment, let me double check. <laughs> Assassination for everyone who didn't vote for Torsten. There you go. Also, right. you guys literally do pronouns for my benefit, and I'm they, them, and I always forget. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not just for your benefit. Whoa, it okay, for everyone's that's benefit. Fine. No, yes. that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> um so uh so yes yeah, so last time uh we did some fun stuff i do want to very first shout out that um we are taking bit donations of course and josh long thank you very much again for another failure for me uh, that i can use to make a player <laughs> fail role. Uh, josh long of robert, course I robert i is, love that uh, Yay. Yeah. that was great <laughs> Uh, it, Josh is, of course, Amber, your DM. Yes. Uh, so perhaps this will be used to make you fail. I guess. Great. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, <laughs> so we have one of those going. And uh, we also are giving away free PDFs whenever somebody rolls a 20 on their dice. A natural 20, as it were. Uh, we'll be giving things away. So look out for that as well. And cheer for situations where people roll lots of dice like combat. Uh, so that is one thing that we can all look forward to. And now we'll get to a quick recap. Last time on the Demon Plague, you all were gathered in Tomar's Crossing and looking for people who might have succumbed to the Demon Plague. You got most of the people rounded up and put them in the makeshift prison that you have created just outside of the village in an abandoned makeshift fortress. But there was one person, Baobab, who turned into a chosen Phalok, an even more powerful version of the undead infected with the demon plague. Uh, you were able to put Baobab down, 
And in the meantime, you were campaigning for the people you wanted to be on the Tomar's Crossing Village Council, which just had its election. You were aiming for Torsten, Kadra, Summit, and Huberg Greyborn to be on the council. And the elections were about to be announced when we cut away. Uh, meanwhile, Bruce Killshatter, a <laughs> revenant from Rock's past, had also shown up into town and was missing some of his memories of the afterlife and was working with Fairy Eye the Wise to get those restored. Uh, Fairy Eye the Wise to get those restored because maybe there was some information in there that could help you figure out why a comet had struck the Luna Valley, uh, which Bruce claims is not just a freak accident. So that is where we left off. Uh, before we get to the results of the election, uh, I would like to actually start with our guest. Um, so Amber, yes. your character has just made it back to the village of Tomar's Crossing. All mm -hmm. of the people that you are traveling with are sort of in tow with you. Mm -hmm. um, and they see an opportunity to break off as this big crowd of people has gathered in the village square to hear the results of an election here in town. You uh, also see uh, someone you recognize. You notice for a split second, Fairy Eye the Wise uh, appears in her ghostly vidges, visage before you and then uh, sort of beckons to you to come towards her with her hand and then uh, disappears as, so to make it so the people cannot see her. You, being a uh, individual who shares certain traits with Fairy Eye, are able to see into the ethereal plane mm -hmm. and can actually still see her beckoning you to come forth. Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll follow. Okay. Uh, yep. Uh, so you follow, and uh, she says, uh, Nala, I'm so glad you're here. Uh, we've made a big discoveries, and I think the heroes are almost ready to move out f on their next journey, and I think you can help them. Uh, you know of Elebrin's retreat? I Yes, I do. I've, I visited there often. Ah, excellent. Well, I'm hoping that you can guide them there. Uh, they're almost ready to uh, leave, but come with me. There's an election of some importance here in town and they're about to announce the results. Okay. Uh, and she leads you uh, to this village square where there is, it's sort of a muddy little place. There's not like a big paved road or anything. There's a large bell um, and a small platform stage. And up on the stage is this old woman that our players know is Pauline Sandalwood, one of the current village councilors. And she's announcing the results of the election. And she says, I am pleased to present the new village council of Torsten Alehand. And there is a big uh, applause eruption as uh, Torsten's name is announced and everybody is super duper happy with um, this announcement. It seems like Torsten, you know, you've got a ton of votes, you have the goodwill of the people and that sort of thing. So there's this big, happy announcement. And as the Palmine sort of with a sour look on her face gets everybody to quiet down and says, and of course, Kadra Tourmaline. And there's again, another big announcement that as people are excited about Kadra. And she says, Summoth Skull Cleaver. Uh, and oh. again, more applause for Summoth. Everybody is very happy with that. And then she says, and Kataka LeBlorn. Boo. Uh, <laughs> boo. I boo. There <laughs> is a lot of applause for that as well. It yeah. does seem like people uh, voted. Not as much as there were for the first three, um, but there is some applause. And you all take to the stage, and Palmine says, of course, uh, as is traditional, we will have one 10 day of transition where I will still be on the council and then all of these new people will take over. Uh, we will do our best to hand off and make sure everything is smooth and easy. Uh, you can hear there's definitely annoyance in her voice that she was voted off the council, but uh, she is accepting of her fate. Uh, it is a bitter pill for her to swallow. Um, 
And uh, with that, the crowd is, you know, congratulates you all, comes around. Torsten, there's a lot of congratulation and, and back padding for you. And uh, they begin to disperse. And as they begin to disperse, um, you notice uh, Fairy Eye the Wise materializes here in town, along with your character, Amber. Amber, would you like to describe what you look like? Sure. Um, so uh, she is spectral, blue, uh, and uh, ethereal. And she's wearing a long, asymmetrical, short-sleeved wrap tunic with like a tall cowl and hood. Um, and she has a long, single white braid going down over her shoulder with some wisps of hair uh, coming out. And she is pretty short. <laughs> short, <Excellent>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, goblin -esque, that is great. Would you say? Not quite okay. goblin size, maybe like two goblins stacked on top of each other. So mm -hmm. a human sized. <laughs> uh, a short human. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a goblin and a half of a goblin. A goblin and a half <laughs> size. <Yeah>. Dwarf. <laughs> That's our new measurement. <laughs> right. They measure everything. They, you know, they're always lying around. You have so many goblins. <laughs> Really easy to measure. Listen, things. we got to go over there. It's going to be about 50 goblins before we. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so you uh, see Fairy Eye the Wise is standing there with another uh, ghostly visage um, beside her. Uh, and she beckons forth to all of you to come forward. And she congratulates Torsten and then says, I would like to introduce to you uh, Nala the Gifted. Nala, this. This is the group I was telling you about. This is Isabel and Rock and Rain and newly elected Counselor Torsten. And she gives like a little bit of a uh, a bow that is meant with respect, but also kind of as like a joke. Are <laughs> okay. we supposed to bow now? Oh, I'm so sorry. And Rock will bow. Oh, oh. <laughs> will like put, put her hand on Rock's shoulder like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Uh, and so uh, Nala will just go, it's a pleasure to meet your acquaintances. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you, Nala. What it's brings you to Tomar's Crossing? Well, like Farrier said, uh, I've heard a lot about you. Um, I know that you are heroes. Yes, as I've heard about <laughs> their heroic tales, I'm assuming. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. So Fairy Eye is <laughs> nodding along like, yes. Like, yeah, true. they're heroes? OK. Um, <laughs> I heard, and James, let me know if this is true. Like she's, she knows that they are trying to help prevent the plague, correct? Yes, or she does. So okay. Fairy Eye has sort of filled you in about this, which is why you came uh, back to town with that group of people uh, who you went to go okay. get. And they, okay, okay. So uh, I heard that you are looking to help prevent, stop this plague from spreading. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we want to kill the, the, the demon thing. Oh, oh, okay. So, okay. <laughs> That's, get right to the source and not, you know, trust. Yeah, the, the well, it sounds sure. like this thing, like, we, it keeps coming back. So, you know, the, k kill it once and for all. Uh, that sounds like a better plan than what, what happened before, yes. Agreed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I look fairy eye right in her ghost eyes as I say, <laughs> agreed. <laughs> We did not have much choice. Yeah, the plague yeah, had already so. spread, and we didn't know that the ritual could be adapted in such a way. And you would all not be here to perform this task now had we not done that. So you're welcome. Mm. <laughs> it, it is old, old things that we've already gone over. We are moving forward with new plan, killing bad guys. So hi, good to see you. Uh, so, so are we still waiting on the, the other guy, the brave and the Kavik, or can we just go ahead and like do this now? <laughs> uh, Fairy Eye says, well, you'll still need the components of the ritual. Those still need to be gathered. Mm -hmm. uh, we are still waiting on the other two druids as well to come back with more casters. Uh, however, Nala has uh, brought several uh, individuals and their families with them uh, to cast the ritual, should it need be. So we are making progress on that front. Are we going to go to the House of Chaos now? <laughs> uh Nala is not as familiar with the House of Chaos as she is with Elebrin's Retreat. Oh, uh, okay. Well, we have to go to both, right? Eventually, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if yeah. Nala knows this one better, then we should go that one. 
I, I, I visit it often and I know that there's, uh, that's the gauntlet that's made of jade. Uh, that's one of those components you, we need for the ritual. Perfect. Yeah, that's that's the one that's farther away. So we should get started like immediately. Uh, uh, Torsten, are you still coming with us, or are you like stuck oh, yeah. here now? Well, we have uh, oh, a ten day, right? There's a ten day. Mm -hmm. Although I think that was supposed to be for some transition stuff, but uh, I mean, Summit and uh, and uh, Kad Kadra, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, some, yeah, Summit and Kadra and and the wonderful uh, what was his name? Katika. Katika will be here. So. <laughs> They will be. They will be there. <laughs> and this is, of course, very pressing that we that we figure all this stuff out. So mm -hmm. I'm willing to leave for a while. Okay. And I'm so, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was just saying, I'm more than willing to be a guide, of course. Oh, yeah. We'll I know the way there. there. Yeah. It'll be easy. We'll just go there, get the thing, and come back, right? Yeah, it's always easy. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, can, easy. Like, well, everything else has been... On. <laughs> about this place hmm. what do i know yeah um well it's been quite some time since i've been there uh since you know uh the i <laughs> the glacier oh my gosh uh, <laughs> ugh, it was dropped but i know that there was a lovely fruit garden and well as you traveled further down stuff became quite toxic in what way toxic <laughs> uh james could you, i think you gave me the information yes yeah so in in the in the plaguey undead sense <laughs> oh <laughs> yes not in the masculinity sense <laughs> that's what she said <laughs> uh, okay so okay Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's fruit Thinking. there's fruit okay good fruit. i'm sure it's flourishing in this temperate climate uh, it, it did get quite muggy <laughs> is I will, there go ahead i, I want to say uh so this just got me thinking i know that palmine was sort of working on uh, uh you know some sort of cure or whatever Let, maybe we should find out what she's come up with, uh, if we're going to go to this place that uh, seems to be quite toxic and full of plague, maybe she had, she will have something to help us despite uh, no longer being on the council. Sure. Great I time mean, to I'm, ask. I'm immune to disease, so, you know, I don't, it doesn't bother me. Or <laughs> no, it will bother you when I succumb and then I attack you. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> but I'm glad you're immune. Uh, so if you all want to go see Palmine, that's totally fine. You could probably still catch up with her. You notice, um, Nala, as you're walking with this group of people through the town, a lot of the town is ramshackle and sort of makeshift. You had to cross through these refugee camps outside of the village to get here because this is one of the only remaining settlements in the valley. Um, and so a lot of people were displaced by this comet striking the valley, melting the glacier, all of the water and landslides and things like that that resulted as uh, from the disaster have brought people from other settlements to be outside of this village. So these they're making their way there and they come to a place that actually has like, for what this is, a muddy landscape in the middle of nowhere a nice like sort of garden growing around this little house that is happening there. You also notice that traveling with these four individuals, there is a rug that is moving sort of like a snake almost, or an inchworm, I guess is a better description. Like it's, you know, gathering up its body and then spreading it out and gathering and spreading it out uh, in order to keep up with everyone. Um, it looks rather deft in its movements. It looks like it's a pretty powerful looking rug as it makes its way uh, around with you all. Uh, that is to say, to you all also have noticed a change in Gorf over these last few days. Yeah, uh, that been three levels, three levels of warrior. There you uh, go. <laughs> the, uh, unearthed Arcana sidekicks. Uh, PD that we have. This makes me so happy. What what is this? 
It's our friend. I ask to whoever is listening to me. <laughs> friend is a strong word. <laughs> no way. Hey. Companion. This is this is Vind. He used to be called Garf, but we changed his name, or he changed it, or it. Uh, it he it is called Vind now. It's our rug. Like you, you walk on it. No, no. no. He, walks, he inches. He helps. Yeah. He smothers things. Yes. <laughs> He smother things on our command, which <laughs> or I sometimes... understand sounds murderous. Well, <laughs> and, uh, quite horrible. The rug waves a tassel at you, Nala. Gives you a little. See, he likes you. I wave back. <laughs> <laughs> and then the day. rug sort of tries, almost like a cat, to like circle your legs a little bit. Uh -huh. um, but given your ghostly nature, it just passes right through. <laughs> okay. Because I, I just like step out of it. No, I just let it slide through me. You said like a cat, and I'm just imagining Gorf do like the stretchy leggy thing that cats do <laughs> when they That's want right. to be yeah, picked just... up and held like a baby. Yeah, it does the, the play bow too. Um, you know, where. And then, it, and then it's upset that you don't actually interact with it, and it turns and it lifts up its rear end at you, and so now you're just <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, oh boy! I did, I did not mean to offend your rug. Morph is a cat now. I hope yeah, everybody right. is okay with this. I retconned it. He's a cat. He's a cat. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a cat. They're a cat. Sure. So, He's sure. a cat. They're. <laughs> he, I think. I think when we can finally talk to Wind, <laughs> they'll let us know. Wind. I need to change their name <laughs> name in the notes because I still say Gorf. <laughs> yeah. So the rug is following you all, and you're making your way to this little house. As you get there, before you even knock, the door opens, and Palmine Sandalwood, the old woman who was giving the announcement on the stage, scowls at all of you and says, Rain, Rock, Torsten, Isabel, Rug, Ghosts, Palmine. Uh <laughs> And and just walks back, uh, like you know, heads into the kitchen and leaves the door open for you to follow her. Was did people think she was a werewolf and that's why they didn't vote for her? Oh, I, I hope mean, it so. certainly didn't help the fact that you were spreading rumors <laughs> she was a werewolf. I hope that there was like at least one poster that was like, "Don't vote for werewolves," <laughs> and like Isabel and Rand like both took it down and like folded it up and put it in their pouch, like, "Ha ha, I'm a <laughs> uh, Yeah, there was definitely definitely some people brought into the werewolf. Yes. Um, Our legacy. And... <laughs> if we do nothing else this campaign, that's it. That's the mark we left on Tomar's cross. <laughs> um, and so she'll invite all of you in uh, and uh, asks you to sit down and sort of get some tea out uh, and says, I thought you might be coming to see me before you leave on your journeys. After all, why would a village councillor stay in the village where he was just elected? Uh, and she starts pouring this tea. Wow, out. sass. Is, is this tea piping hot? I mean... <laughs> uh, <laughs> it is. It is oh. piping hot. I say, um, Pamine, I hope that we can, you know, let bygones be bygones, you know. You know. Yeah. Let's the fact that you tried to kill us, you know, <laughs> we're not going to really worry about that. We're just going to move forward. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> Let me take some of the leaves out of yours there, Torsten, because it seems you like weak tea. Uh, Listen, and, yeah. I don't know why this is so weird. It, it, in my tribe, the people who go and do the most dangerous things are the people who are the, the oldest and the wisest and the ones in charge because they don't ask people to do things they wouldn't do themselves. So it, it makes sense that Torsten would be, he goes out and does the things, and so he's in charge. Yes, well, whatever. Um, oh, and then she, she turns to you, Nala, and she says, tea, tea, do you? Um, tea? no, it's been quite some time. No, thank you. A, a biscuit, maybe? I'm sorry that you're, I, um... I, I'll take a biscuit. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right. Um, and she, uh, she goes, she pulls out these, uh, tea biscuits that she has that are sort of scone-like in appearance. Is it and a dog biscuit? It is not a dog biscuit. So, and <laughs> she passes them around on the plate, starting with Nala, and says, so what is it that brings you here before your journey? Uh, here to talk about running the town in your absence, Thorsten? Is that what you need? 
Um, Not for me. No, I'm sure you're more than more than capable of doing that. However, uh, what we really want to know is what you found out when you were at um, at uh, Fort Kickass with the with the plague rats there. And do you have any? Uh, we were apparently going to a place that uh, may have some plague, and uh, we wanted to see if there was anything we could do to protect ourselves or uh, any other way you could help us from your research. Yes, well, I haven't had much time to look. It would be nice if I was able to get a look at those necromancer's notes who was assistant was working down there. That would be something that would be very valuable indeed. Uh, we have the we have that. Yes, yes. Does. Okay, well, that would be a big help. What I have managed to do is make a few of these, uh, and she puts two vials on the table that are glowing blue. They look a little bit like, you know, bright blue Gatorade mm -hmm. and pushes them towards you, but they have like a little bit of a soft dim light glow to them. Um, and she says, drink this up and for a time, uh, not very long, about an hour or so, you will be less likely to catch the plague. Uh, ah. The best I've been able to do with such short time. That's um, pretty good. That's better than all chances to catch plague. <laughs> yeah, and so uh, in game terms, if you drink this potion for one hour, you will have advantage on saving throws against all diseases. Oh. Mm. I mean, is it I an action to drink? It is an action to drink. Okay. And how many do we have? Three? Two, Two I think. It's Two, yeah. The two of us can't catch it, right? Yep, I mean, me, yeah, me Rain can't catch it. Yeah, the ones that get up close and personal. Yeah. <laughs> and ghosts are immune, just yeah. in case. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I think just, Torsten and Rock are just going to take one yes, each. Sounds good. <laughs> just uh, thank you. This is very helpful. Very. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, really, thank you. Oh. This could be the difference between, you know, more trouble for the for the town or, or or really helping everyone here yes torsten i know we've had our differences and Isabel and rain and rock i know we've all had it we've all partaken in underhanded tactics to influence this election and she looks at rain I, I look right back at her and don't say anything. <laughs> do you do you look right back at her as you like sip your tea just yes. like pinky out pinky out <laughs> <laughs> oh. And she says, but it's time to put aside those differences. The battle was hard fought. You won. I lost. Now we must make sure there's a town to defend and run when it comes time for you to take office. So any way I can help in this matter, I am of service to you and to the town. I think, um, you know, even though you know, things are going to be a little different. Um, we can still definitely use your expertise, particularly um, in defending against Bajalin and his allies that were in town. I know you were forced to do things that you didn't want to do, and hopefully those days are, be, you know, are in the past. And hopefully you can help uh, Summit and, and, and Kadra and everyone to just kind of defend against the people that he would use to you know, cause more trouble in the town. Yes, that is very smart, Torsten. No wonder you were elected by a landslide. Uh, just so you know, and I shouldn't be giving out this information, you had the most votes. As Hooray. Oh, when do, you, you. when do they vote King on the, Torsten. the King leader Torsten. of the town King council? Torsten. King Torsten. Uh, the, the town council will decide that themselves within a 10 day. Oh. They meet together and they decide among them who the village master will be. What is that usually like the next day or when they do uh, that? So is... it, it, it will be decided uh, on 10 days hence from that. Oh, okay. The meeting yes. is okay, like in, their so first, we, in our first meeting. Yeah. We have to get back. For yeah. You right. to vote for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, far... I imagine that uh, Leblorn fellow will be pushing to be the village master. Yes. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Uh, how did? Yeah. How? I don't know how he ended up winning. As well, he was giving away a lot of free meat. Someone gave him a good idea. <laughs> we should have stolen it. That was my idea. <laughs> giving it out in your name. As long as he keeps giving away food, then everything is good. 
Yeah. Hey, Nala, how far is it to this uh, to this place? Uh, James, how far would it be? <laughs> so it is, uh, if you are going, let me pull up my map I, here. I had written down 90 miles, if that helps. Yes, that is correct. I had 90 miles from Tomar's Crossing uh, to the retreat and 60 miles to the House of Chaos. Mm. Mm. Yes, uh, that is correct. Quite a distance. Yeah. Which is why we were originally thinking about going to the House of Chaos first, but... Mm. But you have a guide here. Uh, and that's a little yeah. more important than distance and, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you could make it, you know, uh, if you travel at a fast pace, you could make it within three days to uh, Elebrin's retreat. Okay. So three days mm -hmm. there, three days back, four days yeah. to do thing. Mm -hmm. That's plenty to of time. Five. Seems reasonable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, we you, need more than four days to do whatever we're doing. We're probably dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she, uh, Palmine looks at the ghost like, oh, is that going to offend the ghost? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Rock will look at the ghost. Like, she'll see that and look over at the ghost and be like, did, did Rock offend the ghost? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> no offense taken. <laughs> Uh, He's just saying the truth, doesn't he? We should set out at once, then. I called Dusk. What time of day is it? Uh, right now, it's uh, at the... I guess it would be at the end of the day if the election had happened all day. Mm. So it's getting it's getting on towards the evening. We should probably leave tomorrow. Okay. I, I, I don't like flying at night. I can't see very well. Hmm. So are you just traveling around with ghosts now? Like, what's the deal here? I, I've never seen these ghosts before, and you're all being very casual about it. <laughs> uh, we'll kind of give her the, the lowdown of... Uh, <laughs> I mute myself so Isabel doesn't say what I'm thinking. <laughs> They're druids. You could, uh, have some things in common with them. It's so cool, though, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is very cool. Uh, you get the feeling she's not at all uh, pushed out by this, but rather very excited by the idea that there are two ghosts in her living room right now. Um, and she says, well, anytime you want someone to study your otherworldly energies, let me know, uh, free of charge, of course. <laughs> and by study, what do you mean exactly? Oh, you know, take some readings, cast some spells, uh, see what this is all about, what tethers you here to the world, really. Ah, uh, yes, maybe, perhaps one day I might come back. Mm, yes, perhaps. <laughs> Perhaps one day you might. <laughs> and Nala's um, like, no. <laughs> and she, as she is saying this, um, her gaze shifts behind you, Nala, mm -hmm. to a painting that Ooh. is hanging on the wall of a ghost. Looks like there was this sort of very lovely painting was done that depicts a ghost that uh, has their fingers intertwined with another woman who appears to be, you know, a human woman sort of in the woods. And then, so it's these two women with their fingers intertwined, both looking very sad as uh -huh. they appear to be parting from each other, but still trying to touch by the hand. Does the, does the human woman have surprisingly lupine features? <laughs> uh, you can make a, an investigation check. <laughs> I'd rather Rock did an investigation <laughs> check, but I will do it. Well, I'll, I'll do one too if I'm allowed to. Like, oh, I'll, sure. I, she would notice like the gaze and be like, oh. she notices everything. She can see into the ethereal plane. I got I a can, nine. So I can see the DM. That's how. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Investigation. Yeah, I, got a nine. I didn't notice anything. I got a 16. Okay. Wow. What'd you roll? Like a three? <laughs> no, no. It's, investigation is not my highest number, but hey, you know. The problem is Rock notices everything, but we'll see what happens when she notices. Oh, my passive investigation is a 10, so I got a 10? Hey. <laughs> so you, and actually, Nala, you would notice this just as a artist. Yeah. That you can see the human woman in this painting. It looks like a younger version of Pauline, the woman you're talking mm. about. Oh. And I, I'll, I'll turn and look at the painting and, and get closer to it and then turn back to 
and, and, and say, who, this is quite a lovely painting. Uh, who, who is this, who is this of? I mean, obviously Palmine, but the other one. And when you say that, Rock will be like, well, Palmine, that looks just like you, right? <laughs> Uh, and she she lets loose a, like she starts to look wistful and then when rock says that she laughs a little bit and says well, that's because it is me rock i did this painting myself and she walks oh. over and gets a little closer to it and you can see her eyes are glazing over a little bit as she has this memory and says this was the love of my life and she was taken from me Tried to keep her in this world, but it was not meant to be. Uh, that was a long, long time ago. And she will sit back down and say, uh, so anyway, enough about me, enough getting weepy. Don't you have demons to kill or something? Yes, yes, and I, I will go grab those books for you, Pamine, so you can dig into the research a bit more. Thank you. It, if there's anything else that we can do to help, or if you need any more like supplies in order to make more of this blue aid stuff, because this would be really good to have a bunch around the town in case more of those demon plague come back here. Yes, that's. I will be uh, making as much as I can, but you know, it is uh, ingredients are hard to come by these days. Most of this is grown in my garden, and. Try as I might, my magic can only go so far in this hellscape that we've come to call <laughs> Wow, okay, cool. Hey, she tells it like it is. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, thank you. Thank you for your help. A woo. Um, we can go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll yeah, go grab I'll... those books and bring her back. Bring them back to her. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're able to to bring her the books. She thanks you for that, and is uh, you know able to start working on a cure uh, at these things. You get the feeling when you come back to see her, Torsten, like she really has been at this pretty hard, and is this is a priority for her. She's not sleeping as much, and she's working on it. And you get the feeling she may have even her campaign may have faltered a bit because she was working on this. As we leave, uh, Rock will turn to Nala and say, "Like, you're you're coming with us. Is is very I coming? Is are there more of you coming?" Um, I do have uh, that f uh, several mages to help us with uh, casting, uh, to help with the ritual. Mm -hmm. But they're not coming with us to to uh, where are we going? <laughs> Elbrin's. No, El they'll, they'll be staying here. I'm just to guide you to the okay. retreat. Mm -hmm. It's likely to uh, keep them safe too. You know, it's not it's not even that safe in town, let alone outside of it. Yeah. So, uh, and if you start losing mages, it's, you'll have to get more before you can cast that ritual. Yeah. And who are these mages that you found? Um, I'd be interested to speak with them. Uh, James. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so the mages are from right outside. They're actually from a city called Ten Towns, uh, which is ten separate towns uh, in Icewind Dale. And you manage to go get them and lead them back to the village. They are all humans, and they all have great, great names that I am not making up right now. <laughs> Bob. <laughs> Bob number two. It's okay. I know you've got like, fantasy. Uh, later up. It's fine. Bobby. No shame. Steven. Uh, they have, uh, so <laughs> their names are... Uh, Zora Bursk. And she comes from Ten Towns. And then there's also Ander Brightwood comes from Ten Towns. And Borovic. Murian Thara. Cool. I'm going to need you to put that one in the backstage chat. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, actually spelled like I imagined it to be spelled. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I will, uh, you know, kind of try to go meet meet with them. Mm -hmm. Just kind of, you know, I mean, obviously, so they're not, not actually to your surprise, Rain. 
They are all gathered in the basement of the kit, or not the basement, the first floor of the kick and punch atorium. Why does everyone keep thinking they can just stay at my gym? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not open to the public when I'm not did there. You, did you put the door back on? <laughs> you, I mean, there's like a, it's like a saloon doors on there. I thought that'd yeah, be cool. Yeah, it got it got broken off whenever. I think I kicked it open. <laughs> oh yeah, you did. You broke you did. it. You did. Yeah, that's also, why there's some of the windows now, so they can't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but also, you have a revenant never... in your house. Oh, who yeah. Lived. Yeah. He just too. wandered in and made kill. Well, I like his. It's like, hey, we're friends of rock yeah. and rain. So, we... you know, just... so when you make it to the kick and punch atorium, which Nala, for your benefit, is this big sort of gymnasium that rain runs and lives above, and there's a sign that says kick and punch atorium and in like paint the name thors is hmm. scrawled in front of kick and punch atorium hmm. and like a little rascals kind of that's really, yes I'm a exactly exactly so we're still working on that new sign still working on that new sign the k's are backwards <laughs> <laughs> no I, I mean rain it's can K-I-K. Spell. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know he's a hermit he lived in the woods <laughs> And smart, so, so, smart. <laughs> <laughs> so you are able to uh, come in and you see these uh, spellcasters are around. When Nala gets there, they stand up and smile warmly. They seem to have great affection for Nala. And they then sit back down and they are talking with Bruce Killshatter, who is this big hulking half-orc who's wearing a cloak that covers most of his body, even though it is super hot right now the weather is still gross in the luna valley so you are able to see that um you know this is occurring they're, they're having this conversation and torsten you're able to go meet with them they tell you a little bit that they know that they're here to help cast a ritual and that's pretty much all that they know at this point now let's fill them in a little bit on what the ritual entails and that sort of thing all right. Yeah, I will just kind of talk to them about, you know, what we know of it and why we're doing it and all that kind of stuff. And, yeah, and warn so, them about Veloc and we'll give them like the the, the uh, ledger yeah. notes about like, hey, if like demon plague shows up, here's what you should do. Here's what you yeah, should not no. do. <laughs> right. So they all seem to be accomplished mages. They can cast some, you know, fairly advanced magic. Talking like fifth level spells is probably the highest they all know. So, you know, they, they seem very competent in their ability, and they all seem fairly respectful. It looks like these are the kind of people you'd be able to recruit for a harebrained mission like this. <laughs> um, so they are definitely, and a lot of them are interested in what's going on, like what is with this comet and that sort of thing. And you can see they're talking to Bruce Killshatter about that when you come in. How did this comet get here? Why did it strike? That sort of thing. Cool. Yeah. And for you know for for them lending their services, I'll I'll uh, leave while we're while we go. I will leave them the spell books that I have if they want to copy any of that stuff. Oh yes, absolutely. They uh, big time want to copy out of spell books, so they definitely do. All right, but you have to do twenty push ups for everything you copy. All right, <laughs> this is still a uh, gym. And then this Bruce Killshatter goes in over gym. in a corner and starts doing push ups while there all the. Go crowd around a book <laughs> well he can't be exhausted so he's yeah. just yeah constantly... revenants don't get tired he'll just do push-ups <laughs> for the rest of the campaign yeah. um, uh while everybody's talking with the mages uh nala will take that biscuit she got and then give it to the rug <gasps> and feed oh. it to the rug because she didn't mean to offend it uh the rug does it eat it, it <laughs> and sort of looks at it and then um, smushes it against itself. <laughs> uh, it doesn't have a mouth or anything like that. Oh, okay. That's how I eat when I'm drunk. So. I'm I sure super appreciate it. you doing that though, because we've never actually fed it, and I was half expecting James to be like, and then a mouth appears. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting. Starving. Yes. You're, yeah, you're in the wrong campaign, but I will write that down. <laughs> there you go. I'm um, ready. <laughs> That's gonna be hard uh, to get out of the rug showing up in tales from the mist. <laughs> Definitely gonna. So I'm so, re- I'm so excited now. I'm doing prep tonight. <laughs> it's yours. Enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, so gross. A rug of smothering that bites people. Oh, that's so horrifying. Just mouths on inanimate objects. That's yeah. the whatever. If it only 
Yeah, what if it only had gums though? No teeth. Yeah, it just like yeah. <laughs> and it oh. gummed you to death. But it doesn't have saliva, so it's just like a drag of it, I'm sorry, yeah. let's go back. This is how mimics are born. <laughs> this is how we get mimics. Yeah, right. This this is how we get mimics. And this is how we move along the plot. So the next day, <laughs> you are all hanging out in Tomar's Crossing, getting ready to travel off to Elbin's retreat. Is there anything else you want to do before you leave? I just rolled my portent dice and I got two 15s. Ooh. Nice. Those are nice. Mm -hmm. um, is Bruce coming with us? Is he staying behind? Fairy Eye is still working with Bruce to recover his memories for the time being. So Bruce wishes he could come and says to you, embraces you in a hug, Rock, before you go and whispers into your ear, if you find anything related to this plague, you kill it for me. Absolutely. Every single one. And, and then he I, ruffles get, the feathers on your head. And Rock will immediately do the thing where he does that and then she'll put them all back. Like, <laughs> like a kid who's had her feather, her, her hair tousled. is like, no, no, no. But as she does that, she'll say, it's, I'm actually kind of glad that you're staying here because you can't get the demon plague. And if this town gets attacked again, I, I trust you could handle anything. That's right. I'll burn it to the ground if I need to. <laughs> But only if I need to. Only, only if you need to. I mean, the people here, we got, we have everything here, including like, you know, Isabel has a house and stuff. So like, just kill things and we'll do the burning later. Okay. Sounds good. And so with that, is there anything else anybody else wants to do? I would just like right. to uh, specify that I spent the night over at Summits. <laughs> oh, all right. Time to resume the public relationship again. Yeah. Now that he's been elected. French toast. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, uh, Isabel comes in uh, with a glow about her, probably having yeah. that French toast glow, as yeah. it were. Um, you know. <laughs> a, a romantic glow and a French toast food baby. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Well, a great way to start the day. Oh, love. And Rock <laughs> winks at Isabel, but doesn't say anything else. <laughs> this oh, is God. this is a strange turn in our friendship and i don't know how i feel about it <laughs> isabel yeah. is she's happy for you but uncomfortable yeah she's happy for you but she's learned that maybe you don't want me just you know blurting out about all the yeah. stuff that she can see it's like, so it's like oh you smell like someone's <laughs> shower gel my god <laughs> Hey, listen, whatever like, you did, Rock is perfectly happy. And I just took a shower, learned, okay? She's learned that maybe you don't, if, that you'll say it if you want to. So she just, she, she just smiles at you and gives you a wink and then is going to get ready to go. This is strange, but I accept it. <laughs> Rock so is strange. After... <laughs> so you are going to make your way to Ilshara's retreat. Um, after several days of walking in the valley, you've noticed a couple of things. You notice, number one, uh, that the dr the ground is becoming even more of that like drier, cakey mud as opposed to like wet, sludgy mud. So it's still wet, obviously, because it's still mud and it's still sticking to you and everything, but it's really starting to cake. You can feel almost these waves of heat coming from the southern parts of the valley as you travel closer and closer to Elebrin's retreat, it gets hotter and hotter. You notice some more of those weird storms that you keep seeing happening in the distance at night when you sleep. And you can also hear more unearthly howls in the night while you are traveling. Uh, things that sound terrible, things that remind you of the Veloc head that you found uh, underneath a rock a long time ago. So these sorts of things are happening as you are traveling. What do you all want to ask or talk to Nala about while you are traveling? Uh, do we know which items that we're going to find here or that you think are here? Um, I'm aware of the gauntlet made of jade. Mm -hmm. Where? Do you know? Do you know anything about these crazy storms? Did this happen the last time? 
this did not happen the last time there was a demon plague outbreak. Hmm. What can you tell us about this gauntlet made of jade? Where is it at? What kind of creatures are there? Like, just what do you know about this place or the gauntlet? Um, James, do you want me to just make stuff up, or like, did <laughs> so, you have something in mind? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, in the email that I had sent your way, you do know that the gauntlet is on the second <laughs> level, right? Uh, um, I. Did not or the lower level. Oh, well, the sorry. lower level. Yeah, the lower levels mm -hmm. full with necrotic, plaguey stuff. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's yes. good to know. Yeah. Necrotic and plaguey. Yes. So mm -hmm. you've got fruit, and then starting to get necrotic the further down you go into the levels. Yeah, and you it's also, uh, you would also know that the gauntlet is held on a statue in the lower levels. There's a statue of an elf that is wearing this jade gauntlet. What is the significance of this jade gauntlet? Is it magical itself? It's not magical. It's just, someone's like, man, uh, I love jade something, and I Nala, love gloves. I will say the significance is up to you, but it is art related. Oh. So it's, it's an artist's choice that this is wearing it. It doesn't have anything to do with magic. So it's just a jade gauntlet that you maybe we have to wear it in order to perform the ritual. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, exactly. So it has to be worn in order to perform the ritual. And the ritual will also consume the gauntlet when it is done. Does any mage have to wear it? Or does one person in particular have to wear it? Uh, the one leading the ritual. Oh, the leader of the ritual. That makes yes. sense. Yes, it's gonna <laughs> clash with your witch's hat. <laughs> I'm not leading the ritual. <laughs> um, and then what? What kind of creatures or what can we expect here when mm. we go look for this gauntlet? You, you know, you're you're kind of ethereal and can probably get in there no problem. But will we have troubles? Uh, again, polar bears. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Again. been a while since you've actually yeah, been inside this place uh, it was covered cool. by ice for a long time so there was nothing in there the last oh, time okay. I thought you were here recently gotcha. mm -mm. it's been quite some time hundreds mm -hmm. of years yeah. so mm -hmm. anything <laughs> potentially anything <laughs> neat maybe <laughs> necrotic fruit <laughs> yeah you keep saying fruit and necrotic and demon plague and i feel like any fruit that's growing here is probably not a good idea to eat i don't have to worry about that <laughs> this is like, i don't either and i feel I, like rain and isabel were both pulling like fruit off of trees as walking by it's like oh uh, it's good yeah <laughs> Awesome. Rock pulls one of her dozens of rations out of her bag and is like, well, me neither, but it's good to know. Should we, you know, need extra supplies or something? But it, this elf that's the statue that the, you said the, the gauntlet's on, who is the elf? Uh, you can come up with that if you'd like. <laughs> uh, I don't have anything currently. Sure. Sorry. Uh, it's unknown. It's an unknown who the elf is. Mm -hmm. Is there anything? It could be, it could be Elebrin, uh, you know, themselves. It mm. could be a, a meant to be a depiction of Elebrin, but it's unclear. Oh, this guy has a retreat, and he's got a statue. So well, he is the, the he is the god of nature and life. So, oh. yeah, but so d he doesn't he have a, just a garden or something? He's got to have statues oh. and retreats. How do you retreat from nature and not be in more nature? It, it... <laughs> It's kind Elf of like, <laughs> yeah, elves. <laughs> his elves, retreat... man. <laughs> Real. Uh, his his retreat is a garden, hence the fruit orchards and the groves. Yes. Uh, the ah, okay. Is there. So is retreat from other places. Other... Not... This, okay. is, this is better nature than other nature. <laughs> More naturey. It's it's, or at least it used to be before ne necrotic and demon plague stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Okay. Did those howls sound like they were coming from the direction 
of uh, this place, James, or are they just all? Uh, over? You've heard them all around from all directions uh, during the night. So sometimes, yes. Cool. Okay. <laughs> are they That's coming exciting. from the fruit? <laughs> <laughs> Howling apples. Uh, get ready. Know. So. Apple with a mouth, like we said right. before. No. Inanimate <laughs> objects with mouths. That's what's so horrible. No. <laughs> We're going to be attacked by apples. <clears throat> Sorry. So uh, you all are able to make your way there. And in the distance, as you're having this conversation with Nala, you notice a fortress-sized block of granite with a mud-stained glass dome on top it looks like the mud has sort of kept the light out it's all caked and covered and you can see that there's a thin shallow river that brings water into this place from the outside and what's interesting about this river that you note is that it sort of appears out of nowhere like just springs up out of the ground and the water running through it looks clean even though its bed is muddy and that sort of thing it is like a clear clean river hmm. uh and you can see that there's an enormous set of green tarnished copper doors at the entrance of this thing and outside you also notice that there are a couple of trees with leaves on them uh, and they look deciduous, you know, like you're sort of not like an evergreen tree with pine needles. They have big leaves that are green and leafy. It's been a long time since you've seen anything like this mm. as you make your way towards this dome. And this was all covered in ice before the melt? So, yes, this whole okay. place was covered in ice before the melt. Yes. Okay. How tall is this structure with the, the glass on top? Whoops. Uh, so the structure itself is, hang on one second, I've got this. Mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm assuming this is the retreat. It is, it is indeed. So the retreat temple is 50 feet high. So the, the dome starts at 50 feet and probably comes like another 10 feet into the air. But it's all like caked with mud, so you can't really see through it? Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, Rock, in well, fact, if you were to fly up there, Rock, you would know that. Well, and Rock is actually going to ask everybody, do you want me to fly up there and I can try to yeah. wipe off some mud and see through? Go see what you can see. Sure. Yeah, okay. I'll take a flight. Uh, like the closest bit of glass to us. I'm not going to be like out of sight of everybody and pull a rag or something out and try to wipe off some glass and take a look through. Okay, great. Rock, make me a stealth check while you are doing this. Sure. Uh, that's a 19. Okay, Rock, you look down and you see something magnificent. You see uh, several fruit trees that when you look down, you can see that there are these flowering fruit trees that have apples and oranges and lemons and things like that growing on them. You see that river that flows into the complex forms a little pool off to one side that is just clean and clear. And you can actually see that there are some little like koi fish in it. And then that river continues to flow out. You see doorways at the front and the back of this dome that lead into other parts of the complex. And you can also see lounging around are some familiar faces. You notice one of them right away is a big half ogre that you recognize as Bazig. Oh, okay. <laughs> took over, who with your help took over the Black Skull Bandits. And you see that there are some other bandits lounging about with them as they like eat fruit and play games of dice and cards and sort of just generally hang out in this area. Okay. Uh, Bazig, you also noticed that he is talking to two huge ogres that are next to him. So uh, last time you saw him, it was just him and a bunch of humanoids. It looks like now he's got a, a pair of ogres at his side that he is chatting with as well. Nice. Okay. Yeah, and they're like stuffing whole apples into <laughs> their mouth one at a time. Um, 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 um. All right. 
uh, Rock will fly back to her mm-hmm. friends. Good news. So uh, Buzzing and all of his friends are in there. And they're eating stuff. And they seem fine. We should go say hi. Maybe they know what's going on like in the lower levels. Maybe they can help. Yeah. This is good news. For sure. Us. <laughs> right? Ogres. They're... Ogres are always good news. No. He's our friend, right? Uh-huh. We didn't kill him. Well, instead he's, of... he's, our, he's our acquaintance, at least. Mm. I mean, I was kind of upset when he left but you know this is better than what he said he was gonna do it's true they're eating the fruit and lounging around inside of the retreat this is good news isn't it nala <laughs> uh i'm ogres he said <laughs> they're fine the, the, the ogre part isn't the part i'm worried about okay <laughs> we met these guys before they were working for bad guys but they helped us like stop bad guys and oh. then they left and we kind of <laughs> left on good terms uh could I fly, or can I go towards like where the entrance is at, and like peek my head in and see sure. if I can like see with my ghost eyes if like what you know, rock. No offense, maybe you're not seeing what is really being seen. I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> <It's> okay. <laughs> So the way the building is structured, it looks like there's a little foyer uh-huh. uh, before you get to the domed area. So do you want to poke your head in the foyer or do you want to fly up to the dome and poke your head through the dome to see what's what? If uh, Let's do the up top. Yeah, from down. Yeah, bird's eye view. As okay. you say that, I'll be like, oh, no, absolutely. Go take a look. So there's a spot right there that I cleared off if you want to go take a look up there. Okay. And where are they in relation to the dome? They're like down directly below it kind of thing? Uh, yes, so the dome seems to cover this whole room that Rock was looking into, uh, and it seems like, yeah, they're like 60 feet below the dome, the okay. very top of the dome. Like a dome uh, green in house. In this covered little yeah. area. It's very strange. Yeah. So while uh, while Nala goes to check it out again, um, I want to, Torsten's going to kind of like try to move away and find a, a kind of secluded spot, and I want to cast a clairvoyance spell. And okay. So you will be seeing. I want to listen, um, and I can put it anywhere within a mile. So I'm going to put it kind of underneath the dome, and just kind of hear hear what there is to hear, what what they're talking about, and whatnot. Okay. Okay. Sure. So yeah. Uh, so let's go ahead. We'll get to the clairvoyance in a second. Mm-hmm. Uh, Amber. Yes. Could you make for me a uh, a stealth roll? You'll have advantage for being a ghost. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think that's going to be just with your dexterity modifier. Okay. Uh, 15 and, or 14 and 12 is my other one. So 15, uh, 14. Great. So you're able to to poke in the same glass that uh, Rock saw. And you can see the same exact thing. You see a half ogre, which mm-hmm. is like a, you know, half human, half ogre, very big, beefy individual talking to these two enormous ogres mm-hmm. who... And then a couple of other humanoids in black armor. Now you know these people. When the valley, when the melt started, mm-hmm. you know these people as the Black Skull Bandits, and they were like kidnapping people and taking their stuff and doing all kinds of bandity things, taking advantage of the situation here in the valley. Okay. Then uh, you met with Fairy Eye, and she asked you to go find spellcasters, and you left the valley. So mm-hmm. that's sort of the last you know of the Black Skull Bandits, uh, other than what your party here has told you. Sure, so and I don't see anything else strange, like maybe even on the ethereal plane, as I look through here. So when you look into the ethereal plane, what you are able to see is that this place is real. Um, okay. You know, like the trees and stuff also exist, have sort of their manifestations and souls in the ethereal plane. Mm-hmm. And all every blade of grass, all the water, like this isn't an illusion. This is a real place. And you can also sense just sort of with your ghostliness that there is definite magic about this place that like if you were inside there not only would it look like this it would feel like you were in a beautiful spring day with all of these amazing comforts around you that it must be kind of like paradise in there Um, okay uh, my sense is tingling sorry (laughs) so yeah i'll just fly back down and convey what i saw Okay. Like this, this is, yeah, you, exactly what you saw. All right. Nice. Okay, good. It's good to have confirmation about that kind of thing because, you know, I don't always see everything. 
I usually do, but I, you know, I can't like see into weird places like you can, which is, that's kind of cool. It is pretty great. <laughs> One benefit of dying. Mm. <laughs> I mean, Rock it is the benefit of dying. Yes. That. You have to find the silver lining in most things sometimes. Yes. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Uh, Robert, you place your uh, clairvoyance in there. What languages do you speak? Uh, I speak uh, Abyssal Common, Draconic, Dwarvish, and Goblin. No giant. Okay. So you can hear what you would know uh, just based on sort of your scholarly studies is giant no. as these individuals are talking to each other. However, you can also hear some of the other conversations the bandits are having among themselves, which are in common. And... They're talking about the games they're playing, the, the dice and that sort of thing. But there is one conversation that's particularly interesting where you hear uh, two bandits who are talking to each other. And the first one says, well, I don't think these apples are ever going to run out. They're just here every day, growing new ones, no matter how many we eat. Uh, and the other woman says, yeah, that's right. That's right. I'm going to have lots of apples here. Oh, uh, going to have apples, apple cider, going to make some cider, going to be good, going to make some uh, apple pudding, apple crumb cake. I'll be, I'll be very good. Uh, and so they're talking and through these conversations, you're getting the impression that like they've been here for a while and have no plans on leaving. All right. Well, I will, uh, I will share that with the party. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we can convince them to go around them. Although they might want something in exchange for this uh, this gauntlet if it's valuable. Is it more apples, probably? <laughs> they seem to really well, be into the apples. We should just tell them why we're getting the gauntlet. The gauntlet is to help like fix all of this. And she'll just point at all the destruction and say, if they're really going to try to stop us, that's that kind of sucks. I mean, why would they stop us from trying to help everybody? I get the sense that maybe the Jade Gauntlet is actually powering all of this. That's just my <laughs> guess. Green Gauntlet, green forest thing. So it, we'll see. Maybe. But <laughs> well, we don't know that. We don't. It's, so that's my guess, though. But I thought it was a god that was powering all of this. Could be. Maybe, too, yeah. I don't know. I I genuinely hope that it is something as benevolent as the Jade Gauntlet. <laughs> powering all of this. And not, I don't know, some manner of hellish incantation set upon this entire place <laughs> that's going to mysteriously transform our friends into demon monsters. <laughs> well. uh, Isabel does say all of that since she's been watching people transform into <laughs> demon monsters. Yeah, we all have. Yeah, Nala, do you, you said there were like uh, demons and necrotic stuff like down in a lower level? Yes. Um, but it's been quite some time since I've been here. Like I said, hundreds of years. I don't know exactly the source. Kind of got out of the way when it started to happen. Uh, but yeah. yeah. And is it, there like a secret door where all this stuff was? Or like, why haven't they found it? Mm. Kind of thing? Mm. Yeah. Is there any way that it could have escaped? Or maybe they found it and destroyed it. I mean, it's it's Buzzig and his, his gang and a bunch of yeah, ogres. Yeah, but it's powerful. also Buzzig and his gang they're pretty powerful and he's not dumb they've worked for some pretty terrible people in the past mm. this is true but that doesn't mean that they're not powerful and smart i'm just saying they could mm. be working for something also terrible mm. getting paid That's in true. apples like uh, isabel is saying this <laughs> sentence and, like realizing how silly that sounds mid-sentence <laughs> but kind of has to have the last word yeah <laughs> well there's one way to find out we can just go ask well, I just want to make sure we're, you know, I listen for the full 10 minutes and kind of uh, just pick up anything I can about the relationships going on there or, or hear names or anything like that. It's just two bandits scrubbing the floor <laughs> with toothpicks. More, more apple, talk. apple gumbo. Yeah. Apple gumbo. <laughs> I was going to go right for Forrest Gump. <laughs> exactly where I was going to go. in the chat, but I didn't get as much funniness out of it. So I had to say it again. <laughs> I'm sure everyone laughed so I could feel good about myself. <laughs> Please feel good. Please Thank feel you. good. Don't put that in I the like podcast. Will Knight's comment of Apple Teenies. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> apple for breakfast, apple for lunch. I think that's about all you can use apples for. <laughs> and now the podcast is over. <laughs> so, yeah. So while you're listening, um, you hear people uh, talking about bets and that sort of thing and who won last week and that all that. It sounds like maybe they're even betting with apples as they talk to each other. I love apples. Mm-hmm. Uh, another thing that you learn is that Bozig apparently tried to explore the lower levels of this place earlier and found out that uh, things were bad. Everybody he took down with him died and he barely managed to make it up himself. And since then has ordered the stairs, which are in a chamber to the north of this place, sealed because he doesn't want whatever's up there coming out to get him. Um, and well, there you we go. tell that the people are pissed off that uh, with him a little bit because he left their bodies down there. Oh. And that's not something that they think is very cool. And it actually reminds them of Therath's short cloak, the leader he deposed, mm. who had sent people to explore the upper levels and left their bodies up there to be consumed by a gelatinous cube. So. <laughs> and one... Uh, Rug. Is did they say how the um, give any indication as to how those people died? Uh, no, apparently Bowsig won't talk about it. Mm. Okay, so we go in. We just say that we're going down to. We're gonna clear. We just tell them what we're doing. It sounds like they'll be fine with it. I mean, they they why would they want to stop us? Because Bozik's not going to want his uh, authority challenge. Yeah, and also, like, they probably don't want anyone knowing about this perfect haven that has unlimited food and water. Because um, I'm, yeah. I'm just going to, like, I think maybe uh, taking this from them is a good idea and giving it to people. Um, just throwing that out there. Less but bandity people. Maybe they will decide to share, right? Should we just talk to them first? Sure, no, I mean, no, no, no. Yeah. I agree that talking to them first is always a great still idea. so suspicious about these apples. Oh, he's I'm still... on this forever. And these guys are loving the apples. They seem I fine. know. <laughs> Who likes apples that long? Maybe, if anything, maybe they love them too much. Yeah, maybe you're right. I... Right? <laughs> on the one hand, I totally agree with you. We were talking about how we should probably not eat any of the fruit. Yeah. On the other, people are starving, and yeah. when you're starving, suddenly having bounty of apples is pretty sweet. Sure, they got to be sure. getting sick of apples by now. They gotta be yeah, sick of like they, they love <laughs> but, the apples. That's the thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. but what, there was other stuff in there too. They're just having fun with apples. Like oh, you yeah. said, there were like limes and true. Mm -hmm. Maybe other maybe things growing. Apples, apple day. apples yeah. are fun. Agreed. Apple maybe Tuesday. the two guys you were listening over just happened to be like the world. <laughs> those, are the best. those are the apple guys in there. Everybody I'm knows so them. sorry. We've been stuck on this for like 30 <laughs> minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the fun of DD. James is probably sitting so, there like i literally chose just this is all gold fruit. this is all <laughs> content I gold just, i chose the first fruit in my mind and <laughs> you know so, it's all it's all good so let's uh let, let's go talk to him yeah okay sure so uh how do you want to approach we uh, go knock on the door knock right on the door, yeah break the window oh no stop <laughs> it okay so you knock on the door. And when I do, like, so I'll walk up with everybody behind me, knock on the door and be like, Bozig, hey, it's us, hey. <laughs> so everybody make me a perception check, a wisdom perception check. As it everybody were. except Rock. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get advantage on this. I've been standing still for why six Why are you even, like, why are you even rolling? <laughs> because Rolled when I roll, one. I get a 28. <laughs> I got a nat 20. Oh, hey! bah, 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 bah. Bah, bah, bah. Really, All right, really we will be giving this. away a PDF, that means. So someone in the Don't Split the Podcast Network Twitch chat, if you are there, if you enter... Exclamation point, Rocket Orca. Exclamation point, Rocket Orca, in honor hey. of our guest, oh. Amber... You could win a free PDF copy of The Demon Plague, this level 1 through 20 adventure we are playing through right now. So go ahead and enter exclamation point Rocket Orca in the Don't Split the Podcast Network Twitch chat for your chance to win. We'll announce the winner at the end of the episode. 
So you hear, uh, all of you will say here, some muttering in a guttural language like giant. Sounds like there are four different voices talking to each other. Uh, so none of you are surprised when the door explodes open and four ogres come running out of this little foyer area that is before the domed area with their clubs raised. Everyone roll for initiative. Oh. Is one of them Bozig? I'm real mad. Bozig is not one of them. He doesn't appear to have been in the foyer area. Hmm. Well, cool. Does anyone <laughs> speak giant in our group? I just, nope. I just wasted my only good roll today. I can already tell. I got a 14. Torsten got 11. I also got 11. Eight? I rolled a two, so I have a seven. <laughs> Alert! <laughs> that is so fly alert. <laughs> <laughs> it's like no, I just don't. I just no. Okay, I guess we'll fight. <laughs> <laughs> it's my it's my French toast food, baby. It's holding <laughs> me back. <laughs> Been complaining the whole way. Okay, Rock, you're dust. going first. Four ogres have burst out. Do I see Bozig? You do not. Uh, again, there's this foyer area that separates this area from the domed area. All right. Awesome. <laughs> when you say the door explodes, do you mean it just like opens with a lot of force or did it like actually explode? I mean, it opens with a lot of force. Okay. Good question. <laughs> I was just going to say, it's like, mm, these ogres. Mm. <laughs> Rock wants right. to do something dumb. Do it. Okay. Is there any way past these ogres into the actual building? Or are they like totally blocking the entrance? Uh, so they're piling out of the entrance right now. And it's, uh, you know, the doorway is actually made for humanoids. So it's rather cramped as they're making their way out. So you can't, they would get an opportunity attack against you if you wanted to get by them. Oh, maybe. The reason I'm asking, I just want to know, is, like, could Rock conceivably, like, buzz past them? And... You could try. Yeah. Okay. I would like to do that as, as a bonus action. I will, um, I guess I, I guess I will fly to them and then disengage from them and then okay. fly past them. Gotcha. Um, and so I will use all of my movement, uh, which is a lot, as you know, to fly past them into the foyer. Um, mm -hmm. And do I see Bozig? Uh, so uh, there is another set of doors at the end of the foyer, another big set of double doors, and you're able to make it right to those doors. Uh, okay. That would probably be the end of your movement. But I, he, it's just the four ogres have come on out to kill us. Looks like the four ogres were waiting here in the foyer, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not going to open the door because she's not that dumb, but she will yell through the door and be like, Buzzing, we're just here to take care of something. Don't make us kill all of you. <laughs> and um, do I still have an action or did, was that my movement and my bonus action to get so there? So you would need to dash to make it all the way there if you wanted to do that. Okay. Um, Sort of uh, because I can take, I can use a cunning action to, to, to uh, my bonus action to dash and disengage. So was right. it? Right. Well, you can use it to do one or the other, but you would need to do both to get to where you are. Does that make sense? Sure. Okay. Um, all right. Then I will, I, I guess I'll pull out my bow and, and be there ready behind them. Okay. Sure, and there you see, like you come through, and they're like, Rawr, "Little chicken!" <laughs> As they try to get you, except uh, they probably say it in giant, so I have no idea what they're saying. Just... Right, exactly. Yeah, uh, Rain, it is your turn. Okay, um, uh, I am going to. Uh, I'll I'll hold um, my action to uh or i'll just dodge so okay which gives me um disadvantage uh, on attacks against me i believe yep that's correct so i'll just do that torsten um so are all of them still coming after us did some go back after after 
rock or what? Uh, it looks like they're all still trying to make their way out of the door. One of them is turned to uh, face rock at this point. All right. Um, uh, so I will, I'm going to try to kind of put my hands up and, and, just, you know, try to say we're, we're looking for, for, for Bozig, Bozig, I'll, you know, kind of keep saying the name, hoping they'd recognize. And then, uh, I will dodge also, I guess. Okay. Make a persuasion check. All right. Um, persuasion. Nice. Natural 20. Hey! Hey! Natural 20. All right, everybody, go ahead. Uh, remember, if you enter exclamation point Rocket Orca into the Don't Split the Podcast Network Twitch chat right now, you could be entered to win a free PDF of something. We will announce winners at the end. So, uh, yes, you see, you you say Bozig, and the ogres sort of are giving this confused look to each other, and it is your turn, Nala. Uh, okay, so I would like to scare them away from everything. Um, okay. So the thing I have actions called horrifying visage, visage. Mm -hmm. uh, will this affect uh, the party that I am with, or can I basically just like concentrate it to these four ogre or giant ogre things? Uh, let me just take a quick look. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, that's a laugh. Yeah. Uh, so it. Uh, let me think about this. Okay. It probably, at this point, you could do it in such a way that, because it's each non-undead creature yes. within uh, 60 feet of the ghost. That's like everybody. I don't <laughs> want them to see this. Sure. Yeah. Uh, close you know your what eyes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can shout for them to close your eyes if you want to. Yes. Uh, which this might be a thing you've discussed with them too on the way, like, hey, I, I can do this thing, but don't yada yada. <laughs> yeah, so, sure. uh, we'll flashback. So, yeah, exactly. Ah. So go ahead and make, um, uh, or add, it's my turn, right? I got to yes. make the saves for them. Oh boy. Okay. This has a fun, like, extra fail effect. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> Okay, and ogres known for their high wisdom. <laughs> oh, here we go. Or wise. Boom. Okay. Wow, I got a negative one on one of those. Okay. So three of these ogres scream in horror. Uh, and let's see. They also. Oh <laughs> this is so evil. Uh, they also, before your eyes, seem to rapidly age. Ooh. So, oh. like, like a full-on decade. They get more hunched over. Their hair starts to get gray in some places and grows out long. Um, their nails grow long and brittle and then fall oh. off. Um, ah. so, and you see like wrinkles appear as some of their muscles become a little bit more taut Ugh. and uh, some of them even get like gain a little bit more of an ogre gut than they already have <laughs> as they age in front of you. Uh, the one turned to rock, however, managed to shake it all off. And Isabel, it is your turn. <laughs> I have a quick question now that I'm getting into higher level fighter. Mm -hmm. um, how many superiority dice can I expend in an attack action? Uh, so I think you can expend them one at a time, but like All if right. you take the attack action and you attack three times, you can expend three superiority dice if you want to. Okay, I mean, that makes sense, yeah. Uh, now that three of them have aged rapidly, do they, do they seem like they're still like interested in fighting now that they're like f frightened and have aged or... Uh, they, they look like they're uh, interested in uh, not moving any closer to you at the moment. Yeah. I'll take it. Okay. <laughs> um, this other one, and there's another one that's faced towards rock. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah, they look pretty far. Like, they're in the foyer pretty far. It would probably take you... So I'd have to go past the scared ones? Them. Yeah. Okay, now are the scared ones, do I get the sense that the scared ones will attack me for an opportunity attack if I go past them or are they you just not interested? Probably maneuver. In uh, so 
they would get a chance to make an opportunity attack against you. It would be very, it would be a disadvantage because okay. the object of their fear, which is Nala, they can still see. That is, let me look. That is a chance I am willing to take. So okay. I will go ahead and uh, run past them to attack the ogre that is that has his sights on rock. Okay. So yes, you are able to run past them. Let me just make a couple of quick attack rolls here. Absolutely. Whoop. Dropping dice all over the place. And remind me again of your Isabel, uh, of your AC as My AC is 20. Okay, so they all miss. Uh, okay. You like some clubs swing wildly, but now with their old ogre arms as they try to swing at you, uh, yeah. they miss. Cool. Yeah. So I'll I'll maneuver past their uh, attacks. I'm gonna I'm going to uh, swing on this dude. Um, that is, and he is. Uh, is the door to the foyer open? It is not. It is closed. Curses. Yeah, I'm standing in front of it. All right, so with that attack. All right, so I'm attacking with my longsword mm -hmm. for a 17. All right, that hits. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and since I used my attack, doo -doo -doo, I would like to um, disarm, disarming strike. Okay hitting with that weapon. Also, I've been using a D10 for my superiority or a D6 for my di superiority dice without realizing that it upped to a D10. Oh, I'm yes. Very, I'm yeah. very irritated by that. Yeah. <laughs> so I need to get my D10 and my D8. And I, uh, he needs to pass a strength saving throw since I'm doing okay. a disarming attack. Gotcha. What's the DC for that? 16. All right, he fails. Oh. All right, he's going to drop his weapon. Nice. All right, his great club goes flying. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, and I hit him for five damage. I am attempting to do non-lethal damage, so mostly for just five attacking. five with your superiority dice? Oh, plus superiority dice is eight, so... Um, okay. Wait, no, the, dis the superiority dice is eight, so 13. Got it. Um, right. But I'm mostly just moving to disarm him. Uh, and then for my... Back on the kayak is a 19 plus that okay. nine that I get. All right. And I just put those back in there for no reason. Why did I do that? So D8, three, six. Um, I am I am expending another superiority dice. Okay. Uh for um, maneuvering attack to Sounds tell good. one creature that can see or hear me to use its reaction to move up to half its speed without provoking an opportunity attack from the target of my attack. So Rock can somehow try to get away or move or whatever. Okay. Unless Rock, do you opening get away? a door counts. I don't know. Uh, the door, uh, she can try the door if she wants to. Uh, as like can, you could do that as the first thing in your move, kind of try the door. Can I just can I use that? Because Rock doesn't actually want to open the door because she thinks she thinks mm -hmm. it might be there's more people just hiding behind there that as soon as she opens they're going to attack. So she's sure. hoping Bozig would has heard her. Can I use that instead to just examine the door to see if it is locked or trapped? Sure. Okay. I'm sorry, and that was nine total damage with the. Um, superior. Perfect. Nice. All right, okay. so this is an investigation check on the door. And do you get one more attack? Uh, no, that, no, I only get two unless I want to spend an action surge, but three gotcha. of them are like, so I'm just going to wait on an action okay. surge. So, yeah, so you, whoop, the club goes flying, and then uh, you're able to bonk this ogre in the head with the butt of your sword, uh, distracting him as he holds his forehead and allowing Rock to get a chance to look at this door. I rolled a 28. Okay, so Rock, you can tell the door is actually barred. You can see like it's a double door and the seam between them, you can see through a little bit and it looks like there's a, uh, you know, like a wood beam that is between the doors holding them shut. Okay. 
Um, it got the, the door barred. I got to wait for Bazig to come to his senses. And let's see. Okay, so their turn. On their turn, uh, three of the uh, ghosts are terrified. And, or not the ghosts, three of the ogres, sorry, are terrified. And they start making swings, uh, wild, wild swings at you, Isabel. Try me. Yes. I'm ready. Uh, okay, so one of them does connect uh, with a uh, 25 to hit. Uh, you take 13 bludgeoning damage as this club poof, slams you into the wall. Oof. Uh, and then the other ogre who you disarm tries to grab at Rock. So Rock... You can make a dexterity acrobatics or strength athletics check to avoid this grab. Oh, I'll, I'll acrobatics this. I'm, I'm not I strength figured. in anything. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, that's a 27. Okay, so yeah, you nimbly dodge out of the way as this big, slow ogre fist comes to grab you. Um, and as that is all happening, you hear the beam uh, that is barring the door is slid back and you hear a familiar voice say, oh, this bird, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I am not um, Jesus, I am just a rock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a friend that I always invoke whenever things bad happen. Uh, <laughs> and the door um, comes open and you hear a shout ring out as Bozig stands in the, the second doorway here in the foyer and says, hold, hold, everybody hold, everybody hold. It's fine, it's fine, they're guests. Um, and, uh, you are, uh, the, I mean, the ogres stand down as this happens and you all see Bozig emerges. He is wearing his familiar armor with his giant great ax is strapped across his back. And he looks at all of you and he says, you're new. He points to the ghost. Uh, I mean, I'm not really new. I've been around for a while, but <laughs> new to you? Yes, sure. Yeah, yeah. New to these people, right? Uh, not... Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. three days of traveling. You get gotcha. to know people. Yes. Bazig, this is Nala. She's a ghost. Nala, this is Bazig. He used to be in charge of a bunch of bad people, and now he's just in charge of people who every once in a while attack people who knock on the door and she'll give Bazig this look. It's just like, really? Uh, listen, these they didn't know you, all right? They, these guys, they're my family. They didn't meet you beforehand, okay? It's a, it's a thing. They're just guarding the door. They're just, oh my, what did you do to my cousins? And he walks over to the aged ogres. Wh who did this? This is crazy. They're your older cousins now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, well, maybe they're old enough to now be smart enough to not attack people who knock on doors. You haven't had a lot of dealings with ogres, have you? No, just you. Yeah. Well, I'm half half ogre. Uh, anyway, uh, why don't you why don't you all come in? And then he speaks in giant to the the uh, ogres that are there and lead you all through the foyer into this magnificent room, which when you get in there, it, its temperature does feel exactly like paradise, right? Like it's a perfect 72 degrees Fahrenheit. There's a gentle breeze blowing. There's this little lovely babbling brook. You can see the fruit trees are in there. Um, and when you come in, there are some murmurs from the Black Skull Bandits who are playing games and lounging around like, and, Rock just waves uh, friendly to all. I want to spend the entire time walking in, scolding the rest of the ogres that attacked us. <laughs> uh, and you can see they look very disappointed. Well, they should. <laughs> um, I don't know what you thought you were doing. This is ridiculous. This is dangerous. You won't aim that club at me. Who put this dent in my breastplate? Who? Who did it? Who did it? Who put this dent here? <laughs> Where is your mother? Where Full is grandma? Where is your mother? Where is the my my mother? 
I'm telling you what, you're going to take this dent right out of this breastplate. She's like already unhooking. You're going to take this into the corner, mister, and you're going to take this dent right out. Um, <laughs> you're going to okay. polish it when you're done with it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and this like sad looking ogre accepts your breastplate. <laughs> I'll be watching you the whole time. Beating it against the wall. <laughs> just doosh, doosh, it I'm going to make Sumith take care of it. I just want to embarrass him. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so, yeah, so that is happening. Um, that is you happening. Are embarrassing the ogres. Inspiration all around for everyone. <laughs> hey. And the uh, Bozig says, uh, so uh, what brings you here for the apples? Uh, and he pulls a couple apples off the uh, trees and starts tossing them to you while you're all talking. I try and give mine to Gorf. <laughs> or I do give it to Gorf. I say, Gorf, taste this. <laughs> Vind. So we're like uh, Vind. We're now the castle holds up the apple, and the carpet sort of tips the top of it back and forth, side <laughs> to side, and then is rubbing it against the yes! side. <laughs> Just, good. My is favorite good, program. Is it good apple, Gorf? Uh, gives the tassel shrug. Mm, okay. <laughs> Blazik, we are here because we need to get something that's down with all of the bad stuff that's down low because we're trying to stop this whole demon plague thing from happening. What? <laughs> we're trying to stop the bad thing from happening. The bad thing happened. I don't know if you've been outside, but uh, I don't think there's any reverse in that. Well, there's something that's causing it and we're trying to stop it from it keeping happening. And so there's something we need downstairs that I guess there's a whole bunch of really bad, nasty things down there. And so we're going to go kill them all and go get the thing. He takes the bite of the apple mm. and then looks at you all. Nah, pass. Well, you don't need to come. We're not asking you to come. We just need to go and go do the thing. Oh, no, we're not opening up that door for anyone. Sorry. Why not? Because there's, uh, as you said, bad stuff down there. We don't want to get out. How many bandits are in the vicinity? Yeah, uh, it looks shit. like maybe there's right. about 20. 20. Mm. That's a lot. Buzzing, we're here to kill all the bad things that are down there. Oh, you, you, you're going to kill all the bad things. Oh. Well, what's down there? Rock gives him a very long calculating look and says, yes. <laughs> Like, uh, hey, don't you remember how much of a badass we are? <laughs> yeah, granted, we do have a very loose uh, definition of what bad is for some reason. <laughs> she'll also, oh, I hope like, you don't end up on the list. She'll also side eye the um, the aged ogres and look at Bozig again and be like, yes, we're going to take care of all of it. What's down there, Bozig? Uh, make a persuasion check, Torsten. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use my 15 here. One of my, okay. one of my four tens to get a 21. Hey. Excellent. So Bazig will say, "All right, come on," and he leads you to the back of the chamber, uh, where there is another set of double doors, and he opens it up, and you are in what is essentially feels like almost like a little closet. And when you're out of this room, it's dark again. It's sort of like a musty hallway uh -uh. that has a couple of torches in wall sconces that are glowing uh, with this magical light. Torsten, you immediately recognize it, that this flame is cool, uh, but it still provides light. <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh. <laughs> so you are able to look at all this and you see this hall ends in what looks like a fresh uh boarded up area or not boarded up i should say stoned up it looks like a lot of rubble and brick has been taken and thrown at the end of the hallway to uh keep something in place and it all looks rather fresh as it were Can and he says uh look i don't i don't want anybody going down there i lost some good people when we went down there there are these plants down there Ooh. And they're not friendly. Oh, they—they they suck the life out of you, literally. And so I lost good people down there. They're—they're they're still down there. Their bodies are still down there. 
and uh, I would go down and get them. But look, it scared me, and I, I don't want to risk giving up this place. This is the best place we found. It's our shot at survival. You're welcome to stay. You, you all are great. You know, we don't owe each other anything. We, we all made good on our deals to each other, but I'd be willing to extend the hand of friendship. You can stay here as long as you like. You can eat the apples or the oranges or the lemons or whatever you want. You can partake in clean water. That's all good, but I can't let you go down there. It's too dangerous. And what if you die and you let out what's up there come up, huh? Just lock the door behind yeah, us. Yeah, that's fine. Just yeah, yeah just uh, reseal it after we go in. I don't care. Yeah. You don't care if I pile up all this rubble again and you die down there. No. I mean, well, if dead, we die down there, care. then we're not going to care. Yeah. yeah. What what happens? And if we do what we're saying, which is kill everybody and come back, we'll knock, and you'll know it's us. Buddy, I'll break your door down. Yeah, or we're literally just... the only ones who knock here. So. You don't understand. Well, this is the door. Through. He points to the pile of rubble. He's like, this is the door. Okay, okay. Yeah. Nala okay. can easily yes. pass through solid objects. She can exactly. warn you again. Or I have magic. I can tell you that we are alive still. Or we can move these rocks. I flex. <laughs> <laughs> right. Has your shirt been off the whole time? No, no, no. <laughs> oh, you never took it off. Rain never got serious. He holds yeah, his exactly. actions to take his shirt off. Four, four ogres. <laughs> he was like, I, nah, not worth like, it. <laughs> Bozig cocks an eyebrow. Says, what's in it for me? Man, Bell, Bozig, you're a jerk. If you're afraid of all this, this stuff that's down there coming up here, and we go down there and kill it all, then you don't have to be worried about the stuff anymore. And then you could also go get the bodies of your friends. And if we die, you lose nothing. It's true. Uh, Isabel or Rock, make a persuasion roll with advantage. Isabel, would you like to have an advantage on your roll? <laughs> Rock should never talk. I would love to use my plus six. <laughs> Rock should never talk. <laughs> Rock always talks. All right. What she should do and what, yeah, Amber, just so you know, she has a negative two on her charisma. Okay, I was wondering. <laughs> And yet she is the face of the party yeah, because it much. makes more sense. Mm -hmm. Because she, she doesn't know she has a negative yes. two. She thinks she's brilliant and talks a lot. <laughs> Most people with negatives in their charisma do. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, a 23. Nice. Okay, he looks at you and s sort of shrugs and says, you're right. All right, well, yeah, uh, then if you want to go down there, let's get to it. And he goes over and he starts taking the That's... rubble off of this stairwell. And that is where we will end this episode of The Demon Plague. Damn, um, so before we go, uh, there's a few things I want to do. First, Amber, I don't know if you're free next week to join us, but if you are, we'd love to have Ooh, you. Yeah, I could do. Oh, awesome. Yay! Okay. Yay. You know I Excellent. I should Thank be able you. to. I'll double check. Let me check my calendar and I'll get back to you, but I should be All available. Right. That's Fair a enough. confirmed 100% Amber. Yes. Uh, so, but if not, please come back again. We'd love to have you back on the show. Um, so, and I'd love to have you again next week. I think that would be really fun. And for everyone else, remember that we've rolled two, count them two natural 20s, which means we'll be giving away two, count them two PDFs. This episode of the Demon Plague, go and enter exclamation point rocket orca which is Amber's Twitter handle, mm -hmm. all one word, right, right there in the chat, the DSPN, Don't Split the Podcast Network Twitch chat, and you will be entered for a chance to win. We'll announce the winners shortly. But first, Amber, where can people find you on the internet? Sure. Um, so like I said at the beginning, I'm part of a podcast network called Geekspective. Uh, so you can find me at geekspective.com. I'm on two APs, uh, Blades in the Dark, which is a or excuse me, Tales from Mox Fury, which is a Blades in the Dark campaign. And then I also have my own podcast called Shapeshift, which is my podcast chronically my GM journey since I only just started GMing a year and a half ago. Mm, excellent. And excellent. then also Twitter, Rocket Orca. Nice. Well, it's awesome to have you here. Thank you so much Thank for you. joining us. Mm -hmm. uh, how about you, Robert? Where can people find you? Hey, I'm Robert Aducci. You can find me on Twitter at Radu76. That's R-A-D-D-U-76. Uh, you can find me at uh, anywhere you can find Esper Genesis, which is a fifth edition sci-fi game. 
um come check it out on facebook and uh the internet esprogenesis.com and uh yeah awesome cool well it is awesome to have you here as well robert you know i love you uh lauren where can people find you <laughs> why, why are we laughing at love no, I'm just, we're, probably because we're so close to valentine's day that i was just like i mean okay i hope he says that about me too yeah like it was the first time i'd heard him say it about any of us and i was like well listen I, I will continue the love. I love you all. And it's always fun to play with you because Boom. you know what? I, 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 I love, I do. I love the people I play with and I love the fact that they put up with my shenanigans. Oh, hi, I'm Lauren Urban, also known as Obo Crazy. I'm the community manager for D&D Beyond. Come by our Discord and chat because it's fun. You can also find me as the DM for Dungeon Drunks, which is a podcast that comes out every Monday. And you can also find me on Wednesdays on the D&D Beyond Twitch channel playing Okara, the Dragonborn Paladin, or not Paladin, sorry, the Dragonborn Cleric. I'm playing a lot of characters recently and I get confused. Um, she's much smarter than Rock and also much more charismatic and both are fun. And I, I do, I love playing with you guys and see you next week, bye. Thank you, Lauren. I love you, and I'm glad you are here with us. Thank you. Uh, TK, how about you? Uh, who are you, and where can people find you? That's me. It's TK. And I write spooky stories on the internet. And if you like spooky stories, then you can read them at tkjwrites.com. I haven't updated them in a long time because I'm lazy. <laughs> oh, <I'm busy. laughs> no mostly lazy because i could be updating my website but i will be playing prince of persia so <laughs> i mean self-care is important self-care is important it is especially when i am using it as an excuse to not do work <laughs> uh, follow me on twitter tk joins the fray it'll be great you'll have a nice time except for when you don't but i don't have control over that because i'm not your dad and i'm sorry um if you like spooky streams you should watch one on friday nights on the wizards twitch channel it's mine i'm in it i dm it it's fun we have a good time i make people cry i have a great time um that's it buy my book Excellent. and definitely go watch tales from the mist because apparently there's gonna be mouths on things now oh <laughs> my gosh i'm so ready for you guys to see this episode so spoiler alert episode six is called right uh red right hand and it is a vargas episode Ooh, and now i got that song in my head excellent well thank you tk <laughs> i appreciate you being here and i love you mm. <laughs> Boom. and rudy basso where can people find you? Hey, I'm on Twitter at Rudy Basso. You can also head to don't split the podcast network.com for more great for four great podcasts. This isn't a, this will also be a podcast that comes out on every Wednesday. Uh, I'm guesting on the aforementioned Tales from Moxbury right now. A new episode Woo! came out today. Woo! I am playing a uh, stabby <laughs> drow. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love shapeshift too i just want to give another shout out to shapeshift where they're playing right ryutuma right now is that how it's uh, called ryutama ryutama thank ryutama. you which is just the most adorable game in the world so i cute. absolutely love it and they're gonna have a special guest from mm -hmm. our network cat who's the dm for dames and dragons is on the next few episodes and she's great and it's <laughs> great it roll to see if the fish you cook is delicious and <laughs> It is. It's delicious. So it's the best game. I love it. So the palate it. cleanser from this game. Yeah. It's, so. I, I went from playing a lot of evil stuff, and I was like, I want to run this super cute game. <laughs> so let me then also say, Rudy, mm. that I love you. Yeah, thank Thanks you. for being here. <laughs> uh, and I am going to now say that first we need to give some thanks to a very special person. Team WV Fox, who gave us 500 bits. There will be an NPC named after you coming Yay! soon. So get ready. Team West Virginia Fox. That's what I assume that yes. handle stands for. Um, so, yes, uh, come check us out. And I'm James Intercasso. You can find me on Twitter at James Intercasso. Uh, I am also in all of the other places Rudy Basso is, as well as worldbuilderblog.com. 
what you are listening or watching right now is an adventure. It is a level one through 20 adventure. You can get in soft cover, hard cover, and PDF available at roleplayingtips.com slash demon plague. We're going to give away a PDF of that adventure right now. So Bam. let's see. Team WV Fox is the winner. Team it's a there big you day go. for you, Team WV Fox. <laughs> you are going to be getting a free PDF copy of the Demon Plague. And now we are also giving away a free PDF copy of Dragon Heist Forgotten Tales. Ooh. A new Ooh. PDF that I just put on the DMs Guild with uh, James J. Hake and Will Doyle. It is a way to make Dragon Heist even more replayable than it already is. So let's see who will win this one. Lumberjacks. Hey! Lumberjacks, hey. you have won the giveaway. Uh, we will be in touch via your Twitch account. So uh, to get all the information we need to be able to send things your way. Be Thank sure to you follow. All. Smash yeah. that follow button if you haven't already. Smash the follow. Smash the follow button. Do it. Uh, and I think that's all I have. In the meantime, don't let the demons bite, Rudy. Yep. Bye. Bye. We love you.